The reality on ground is that the office of the president of Nigeria has too much powers, right? And the constitution made it so. And so the that is why there is so much crave and interest in becoming the president of this country. Too much powers, too much. And then the office of the vice president relatively as um, embedded in the constitution do not have enormous powers as we thought it should be. And that's why sometimes we see deception of trying to bring in technocrats as um, vice president and actually get there and do nothing. I, I, I've said it before, one of the most prolific, most capable, most qualified vice president we've ever had in this country uh, is Professor Yemi Osibanjo. But when you look back now and say, what has Yemi Osibanjo actually done? Relatively nothing. Trade that money, a few corruption cases around him, whereas you could know that this is just politically uh, motivated to reduce his voice and weaken his, um, his influence. That being said, the 2023 election is something that is very serious, and then we will not joke with it. I want to remind Nigerians, like I've always done in my private time, that the office of the vice president must be taken as serious as possible. In fact, like someone said, anybody you have voted to be president, remember that the vice president should be capable enough to also be president. He is also a president of some sort. And so, <coughs> excuse me, there is no need trying to gain say or overemphasize the need for us to have a quality representation as vice president to whoever we choose to be our president. And that's why I'm doing this history. Kazim Shetima is a vice presidential candidate of the APC. <laughs> not for respect to him. We will not, I will not be here alleging what is not factual or what is not there. But a lot of persons have um, say there are stains of uh, a lot of things uh, on the candidature or the personality of Kazim Shetima. Um, there are reports of Alimodu Sherif, um, SY Governor of Bono State, stating that um, Kazim Shetima has questions to answer um, about the formation of Boko Haram. A lot of people are also saying that Kazim Shetima uh, most likely too um, would have, would have also been one of the principal actors in destabilizing the government of Bula Jonathan. I don't know. The letter that Yinsumuke wrote to Kazim Shetima while he was Minister of Education for State and of course um, Kazim Shetima was Governor of Bono State is still very much in the public place where you warned him um, or advised him not to have the uh, West African Senior School Certificate Examination was written in, in Chibok but it, to today. Of course, you know what Chibok gets um, abduction due to the government of Jumatan. And so people are saying those were politically motivated stunts that were created by this personality um, just to ensure that Gula Jonathan was uh, removed from office as president of this country. That's what Kazim. No wonder, no, no doubt that the man is a very brilliant chap. Um, a few interviews I have seen him done, apart from the fact that he had to insult the office of the president and call him a common ice cream seller. Brilliant chap. But is that the kind of president that you want? He is vice president. Like I've said on this video, particularly, if you want to vote for a president, remember that the vice president should also qualify to be president for any reason. Bishop Isaac Idaosa, or Archbishop Isaac Idaosa, is running mate to Rabbi Musa Kwankwansu. Brilliant young man. I will not say anything, I'll show you a video of Bishop Isaac Idaosa. <laughs> ah! Just watch the video, watch the video, watch the video. One punch. Now, there are 15, 20 of you here. You are going to do something. You will touch my sweat. But whatever you are carrying, you will empty it as a seed on this anointing. Not everybody, like 20 of you, whatever you are holding, you will drop it and say, Take buy a recharge recharge card. I'm doing this, I've taken here. It's not about the money. No, 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 no. You will touch my sweat. Say, I will not sweat to rise. If you are not emptying yourself, don't come. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Quickly. Be on the line. Touch this sweat. No, drop it and touch this sweat. Empty yourself. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you, Bishop. Oh, love you. And use it to touch your forehead. Your, no, don't touch my head. You won't, you won't ordain me. 
No, gently, gently, gently. If you don't, shh, listen, you will fool yourself if you just took what you want to take. If you are not emptying yourself, you have not done the right thing. Is that the kind of verses that you want as, uh, in, in, in 2023? Is that the kind of verses? <laughs> no disrespect for as you should be that also, but man. By the way, I need to say that uh, Archbishop uh, Isaac Idaosa is not in any way related to the progenitor of the Pentecostal movement and uh, in Nigeria and uh, the late Archbishop Bensi Andrew Idaosa. Not related at all, not related at all. We need to say that so nobody should use that to score political points. Right? So we move on. The next I want us to look at is the person of Dr. Ifan Yokowa. Ifan Yokowa is the current governor of Delta State. Um, the same state where we have had um, Governor James Ibori and of course uh, Dr. Emmanuel Duaga um, as successors before us or as predecessors before he came. As I talk to you now, Dr. Ifan Yokowa um, has not implemented the new minimum wage. While some states has moved on from the 30,000 to 40,000, I understand that Dr. Ifan Yokowa paid politics, paid some at some point, then took them back. I don't know, I may be wrong, but I've tried to get my research and they, obviously the minimum wage of 10,000 is currently not being paid in Delta State, as rich as that state. And the Delta State has been polarized with a lot of political lines, a lot. People are sorted, there are too many ghost companies and ghost institutions in Delta State. And as a technocrat that we, we thought it should be, we expected to find your co-worker to have done better. Go to worry and see the glorified slum that it is with all the oil money and all that. So personally, Personally, um, I've also visited his own town. I think he has had a few inputs, even though a few persons think they would have done more. So, <laughs> Ifan Yokowa, governor of Delta State, for eight years now, of course, will be eight, um, uh, completing his, eight, his, his, his last one year to complete his eight year term. Um, is that the kind of president you think you want? Once again, just in case you're meeting this video at any point, we are discussing presidents, and I have stated here um, that a vice president should be somebody that is qualified to be president as well. So we move on. Let's move on to the vice presidential running mate or the vice presidential candidate of the Labour Party, uh, Dr. Yusuf Dati Baba Ahmed. Economist from first degree to doctorate. And one thing I love about him, apart from the fact that he's eloquently uh, blessed and that he speaks, is his quality interest in education. For a man like him who is blessed financially, who is economically viable, who understands the business terrain of this country, would have seen that Dr. Baba Ahmed would have invested in hospitality, maybe hotels and lounge and clubs, like his other millionaires and billionaires do, yeah? Invest in all sorts. But he has taken the time to invest only in education. Ah! And if there is a need for us to ask what is our greatest need at the moment, education. I'm not just saying opening universities, I'm not just look at what Kenanland is doing, um, God bless Bishop Oyedepo, what you're doing with Kenya land. I'm not just saying starting up um, uh, uh, infrastructures of owning the school, laying solid foundation for the education of the minds of young people. I have been, go to the engineering department of certain universities and protect me with disappointed. I think that being an engineering department, there should be masterpiece crafted, innovative, um, creative um, um, inventions that will be wow, that will wow you. You will get there and say, really? But hey! I had a friend who left computer science uh, from a university in South South Nigeria. Let me not gaslight or shoot anybody. After five years of studying computer science, this young lady went on to register for a three months training course on how to use the computer. That's the kind of educational system that we have in this country. A system where theory is made and stretched to 99% and there's one percent practical. And even in practical, there is a little, a little of the resources that you have to work with. So look at Baba Ahmed, he invested so much. I trust that just the way we are going to have a president in Peter B, handling the economic issues, solving the security issues, dealing with our, our issues about dependency on oil on a, a few months, we have a man, vice presidential candidate, um, Dr. Yusuf Dati Baba Ahmed, that will fix the educational system, most likely. That would that would be someone that have hands on skis. Not these guys that we have around him. We have said that as a professor of law, like Emil Sibajo, he should have been a hundred percent having his hands on the judiciary in this country. But of course. The Kaaba did not allow him. So let's give a government that the Kaaba will not be in control. A government where we have two people who can qualify to be president, but they have chosen to run with each other. The choice is left for us. 
God bless Nigeria.